This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And today we have a very special guest. Longtime friend. I was say he's an old friend, but he's a young guy. It's uh, Jay Martin. He runs uh, Cambridge House International. And he puts on some fantastic programs for people in the broad category of resources. And he's located in... Uh, Canada, where the resources are, other than Russia. And um, we're going to have a very exciting show to you today because, you know, I think people are kind of waking up that inflation is here. Infl- inflation might be here to stay. And the problem with inflation, this is my personal thing about it, it makes the rich richer, but it makes the poor poor. I mean, literally poor. And then the middle class it's hit the hardest. And the thing that concerns me is, you know, I wrote my book, The Capitalist Manifesto, and revolution starts when the kind of the, when the poor can't survive. Because, you know, like when you, you go, to, go to the store and a piece of celery is 20 bucks, and today it's oil and all this. So the question today is, what do you do? How do you hedge against what's coming? Because when Biden, you know, when that commie Biden cut off the XL pipeline, the price of oil went through the roof. I was I was buying oil at thirty dollars a barrel, or I was selling oil at thirty dollars a barrel, and then it went to a hundred thirty dollars a barrel. So I got really rich, but it wipes out everybody else, and and that's why then Biden has the guts to blame Putin for it. I'm going, wait a minute. You're the guy that cut off the pipeline. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a political show. We're not CNN and we're definitely not Fox. But we better start paying attention. So that's why I wanted to have Jay Martin on here because he's in the heart of resource country, which is Vancouver, British Columbia. So welcome to the program, Jay. Thanks for having me, Robert. Yeah, I'm excited to chat with you. And everything you said resonates. It's time if you're not paying attention if you're still riding the default mode you you gotta start listening to the rich dad radio show listen to the jay martin show it, it's time to start paying attention and taking control because exactly what you just said right if we thought consumer inflation has been bad and caused you know disgruntled civil unrest just wait until we see food and fuel riots in the streets and i've never i've never been a doom and gloom guy that's not my that's not my that's not what I am, right? I'm the moderate. I'm always like sensationalism over here, sensationalism over there. It's our job to find our angle, right? Not get wrapped up in the hyperbole. I'm an investor. I'm looking to make money. But I mean, this is, uh, I think the rest of the 2020s will be like the first two years of the 2020s, right? Unprecedented is the new precedented. And this is just getting started. Correct. And we both have some really stellar leaders. You have Trudeau and we have Biden. I mean, <laughs> yeah. talk about it. <laughs> but do you have do you have a uh, do you have a Kamala someplace hiding up there? Oh, we don't. Fortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, <lucky. laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess well, we could with this new alliance between the the Liberal Party and the NDP. Maybe, maybe Jack Deep Singh is our Kamala Harris. This is new news in Canada. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but but uh, yeah, Trudeau and the Liberal Party has aligned with the NDP party, which is the closest thing that Canada has to a direct socialist party in order to stay in power and avoid a, non, a non-confidence vote until the year 2025. So no election until the year 2025. Yeah. And, I, yeah, and I was really proud of your truckers in Ottawa, you know, who flipped the bird to uh, your, your boy uh, Trudeau. I mean, I can't believe it. Trudeau actually praised uh, Castro. It is, it's ridiculous. And Castro has murdered so many people. But that's really the communist, and the communist way is to kill as many people as possible. I'm, I'm a Vietnam veteran, and I saw Vietnamese killing Vietnamese. And that's just not part of our psyche. But the trouble with communism, or what you can see in the Ukraine, they'll shell housing. They'll shell women and kids and all this. They don't care. You know, it's murder in my book, but as a U.S. Marine, that would, we go to jail for that. But the communist system is, it's okay to murder your your fellow human being. And so that's why it's dangerous. But more than so, other than just that, how do you protect yourself from them killing us in our wallets? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So what what is your forecast on, you know, when you, when you watch 
what Biden's doing and Trudeau's doing. They're, they're a bunch of hardcore communists. They may not know it, but what they're doing is making it really tough on the poor and middle class, aren't they? Yeah, 100%. And that communist manifesto is always sold under the guise of community and togetherness. And we're going to have each other's back. And any student of history knows that's never how it goes. It, it, but repeatedly it's sold to the public and the public accepts it. Isn't that wild? How many times do we need to learn this lesson? Right. But we're going in that direction and, and it's, it's somewhat horrifying. And so what do you, what do you do? Right. My answer is optionality right? It's like, I need, I need options, right? And so whether that's stores of wealth and a variety of safe haven asset classes, I'm, I'm heavy gold, silver, Bitcoin, I'm heavy real estate. But beyond that, you know, we're optioning our U.S. passports. I'm Canadian American, my, my family's dual, right? And I want the optionality of a couple of geographies, to be honest with you. Right, right. So let me say, what do you see with inflation? Because, you know, this is why I say I'm an oil guy. I own lots of oil. And like I said, we were selling it for 30 bucks a barrel, then it went to 100, I think today it's 105 a barrel. So I'm making a lot of money, but I'm talking to Sarah, she says, it's costing me more money. I just said, oh, thank you, you know? <laughs> so, it's, so with Sarah and I sitting in the same office and I'm getting richer, she's getting poorer. And, and Mike, <laughs> am I correct, Sarah? That's right. <laughs> Anything else you want to it say? It was $70 to fill up my tank today. That's so ridiculous. It's <laughs> double what it was a year, you know, two years ago. And then the, and the way, I don't know if you know this, but oil provides fertilizer and fertilizer is what keeps the crops growing. So you're going to see food prices climb and then the, the cost of getting the food to the supermarkets and all this, it just gets to be worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And so that's when Biden cut off the pipeline, you know, the, what was that thing called anyway? He made me a rich man, then he blames Putin for it. I'm going, what? These guys are cartoons, they're jokes. I mean, as a Canadian, what you, you must be looking down here and said, Americans are nuts right now, aren't they? <laughs> you can say it, what you know, like. it, it, add, it adds up though, doesn't it? Like, yes, I mean, how much oil and gas actually makes it to the US from Russia, it's less than 10%, right? And the US has lots of options to produce more Natural no, gas but, but, and oil. But Biden does cut. Biden does cut, cuts it off here. I mean, he cut. He cut. He's cutting our oil supply. I mean, I produce oil, so I'm not. I'm not concerned at all. But he cut the production of America down. And right. so, and then the, the the biggest problem is for the last few years, all wars are about oil. You know mm-hmm. what, what happened to uh, Pearl Harbor when my uh, not my not my relatives, thank God but they bombed Pearl Harbor because Roosevelt cut off oil. Yeah. And they said, you, you screw you, we're gonna bomb you. So I, I watch what's happening in the Ukraine and then Biden goes to Saudi Arabia. And then this was the biggest thing of all, Jay. I don't think anybody saw it. China agreed, I mean, Saudi Arabia agreed to sell China oil and mm-hmm. trade in the Yuan, the Chinese yeah. currency. What does that mean to you? Uh, you know, I don't know if it's as big of a headline as we make it out to be. I guess I'm more bullish on the U.S. dollar uh, in like the, the medium term than a lot of people in my industry, just because I, I put myself in the position of, <clears throat> look, if you were to pick me up, Robert, and drop me uh, shoeless in a random country, random city, anywhere in the world, like just you, you spin a dial and pick it at random. And, and the only thing I had in my pocket was 10,000 cash. What currency would I choose? Right. It, it's USD and it's going to be for the foreseeable future. You know, I, I don't like the direction things are going, but I don't know of a currency that holds more influence on the global stage or that will, you know, over the next. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm, I don't think people, I don't, I don't think people know the history of the dollar. It's a petrodollar. The U.S. Yeah. dollar is what everybody trades, not only in food and stuff like that, but they traded oil in dollars. And so that's why when I saw that happen, I said, that Biden is a son of a bitch. That son of a bitch. The moment that they start accepting yuan, I mean, why doesn't Biden, I, mean, I guess his family does work for the Chinese government, don't they? I mean, Hunter gets paid a lot of money. By, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I just really can't believe it. But the point here is this, is what are you going to do about it? And that's why that's what why we have the Rich Dad Radio Show. You know, I, I think you you know we uh, I just took a position one of the largest gold mines in the world in world history, 
And I'm very bullish on gold. I mean, we have tons, I have control of tons of gold, not just ounces. And because to me, gold has been money since God came around. Gold and silver are God's money. Bitcoin is people's money. And so sure. that's why I watch the dollar and I still see, see Americans saving dollars or Canadians. You know, I'm going, what the heck are people, are they nuts? So, so what, what do you think? Well, I mean, I, I hold, if and when I hold cash, it's strictly to capitalize on opportunities, like you said, right? You're building a position in, in you know, one of the world's largest gold mines for that reason. And I've been heavier cash over the last six months than ever before. And the reason was, Robert, I really struggled to find value anywhere, right? It was like, I'm, I'm, I'm heavyweight and continuing to buy gold and silver, so Jay, but, what does that tell you? If you can't find a deal and you're stacking with cash, because of course Biden printed, I don't know how many trillions, got lost yeah, count. Yeah, yeah. They're printing so much cash. What is that going to do to real assets? That's my question. What do you think is going to happen? Like gold and silver, you know, they're, 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 they're not moving. Gold is about 1900, silver is about 25 US. Real estate's in a bubble, stock market's in a bubble. Where mm -hmm. do you put your cash? Uh, yeah. And so where I'm looking right now is junior mining equities. That's my, <laughs> it's my target of choice. I know I I'm talking my books, but Hey, like, you know, it's, uh, I, um, I'm heavyweight, uh, gold and silver. I'm, I'm, I'm quite exposed to Bitcoin and I feel like that's my insurance policy. That's the moat, right? And there, if you've got a great moat, how do you build a castle? You look for the upside, right? So, and, so, so you, you just, you just walked right into my lead here. How does somebody get into junior mining? Because there's Bitcoin mining, right? That's right. And, and that takes a little, that's beyond my sophistication. But I can start a gold mine. So I started several gold mines, several silver mines. So how do you invest in junior miners? Because that's that's the biggest play of all, if you're, if you're good. If you're good. That's why the highest risk plays there are all too. <laughs> Yeah. And it, it depends on your sophistication, your risk tolerance, your available capital, all of that stuff. And I recommend everybody, if you're unfamiliar, maybe the same as you would, you know, start with some of the cash flowing gold producers, right? Right now we're seeing better management teams, better balance sheets uh, than ever in, in my life in the gold production sector. Right. And I've got some absolute favorites that I'm watching right now, but I like to go earlier stage and get some leverage. It's just how I'm built, but <clears throat> Yeah, but, but please explain, because the reason I have you on this program is, you know, I, I used to be a junior miner also, until the Chinese took my biggest mine in history. But how does a person, because it is the highest risk play, but I yeah. love junior miners. You know, they say, how, what is the definition of a liar? A liar is a guy with a pick and shovel standing next to a hole in the ground saying, this is the biggest gold mine in the world. And those are junior minor guys. So that's why when my friends found out I was in Vancouver, British Columbia, they said, boy, you really went to the dark side, didn't you? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Vancouver, British Columbia is where the Frito Bandito hangs out. And I was hanging out in Vancouver, as we've talked about before, I heard more bullshit than in my whole life. I'd sit there and everybody was pitching me a deal, but everybody wants to strike the big vein. That, you know, that's that was the 49ers in California, that gold mine and all this. Mm. So how does a person get into junior miners? Because it is the highest risk, in my opinion, of any investment possible. Junior miners, especially when Vancouver was active, the highest risk yet is the biggest reward. How does a person get into it? Yeah. So the way I would approach that is you need some very concrete rules that, that you figure out how you're going to say no to a deal. And you're going to say no, ideally nine times more than you say yes. I mean, everything you just said is accurate, right? It's a hustler's market. There's a lot of, there's a lot of funny business going on <laughs> and, and investors that just run in blind will get fleeced right? That's why the returns are great. You don't get the potential for 10 X 20 X without the potential to lose it all way more frequently. I mean, that's how it works. Right. And so when I look at this industry, first of all, it's like, do I trust the macro tailwind? Yes, I do right now. I don't think volatility is going to go lower. I think it's going to get higher in the global stage. And so 
That's why I looked at precious metals from there. It's all, it's a people game to your point. Like, you know, you want to pick the most talented liar, I suppose, but you, you, you're looking at, you know, who's running the deal and do you trust that individual to have an adventure with your cash? Cause that's what they're going to do. Right. Well, it's, and it's, what's their track record? Uh, it's, it's even more than that. It's the people I'm, I'm such an old guy, about this in the old days, you know, they would actually have these newsletter writers. So it'd be the Robert Kiyosaki newsletter. Yeah. And then, so these, these miners would come up to the, to me, if I was a newsletter writer, newsletter writer and say to me, hey, I'll give you a million shares of my stock if you'll pitch my gold mine. I yeah. see it today all day long, but today it's called crypto. Sure. I see it all day long. There is a direct correlation between bullshit and bullshit. It doesn't make any difference. I was listening to this guy pitching Cardano, Solano, D- DeFi, this stuff. I'm yeah. just said, I'm back in I'm I'm back in British Columbia, in Vancouver. So how does a person know? Do you know what I mean? How do you know? Because all these guys pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping, and the suckers just come running in. Yeah, that's the question. So when we come back. I want you to think about that because there's a direct correlation. You know, I'm going to start buying Solano, but I listen to a lot of pitches, just the same as Ethereum and the same as, I'm, I'm glad I listened to the guys at Bitcoin. I did extremely well, mm. but it's the same bullshit. It's, it's the same rodeo. Absolutely. It's just, yeah, yeah. There is no different yet. It's the hottest thing you can invest in today. So we mm. come back again. Our guest today is Jay Martin. He's president and CEO of Cambridge House International. He's my go-to guy on junior miners. Are you also the Bitcoin guy too? Are you a junior Bitcoiner? <laughs> I, I am a junior Bitcoiner, yeah. Yeah, not nearly as aggressive in that sector as I am the junior miners, but yes, yeah. I have skin in the game for sure. Yeah, so it's a, very, it's a very important program for people to listen to because the hottest markets today are the plays against the US dollar because they keep printing more and more of it. So when we come back, we'll be with Jay, Jay Martin, President and CEO of Cambridge House International. He lives in Frito Van, Bandito con, com, country, Van, Vancouver, British Columbia, and I love it there. I've heard more bullshit stories than I could ever stand when I was up there for those years I was working over there. Anyway, we'll be right back. Out here in Phoenix, the cost of rent has gone up 28%. Thanks to record inflation, almost every living expense has gone up. And inflation can erode your personal wealth too. That's why I think investing in assets that offer protection from inflation is critical. There's an overlooked asset that some experts say is a good store of wealth today. When volatility raged in 2020, its prices outpaced 10 other major asset classes, according to Citi. This investment isn't gold or some type of stock or bond. I'm talking about blue chip art. In fact, blue chip art prices outpaced S&P 500 by 164% from 1995 to 2021. And thanks to Masterworks, you can invest in million dollar art. To add this asset to your portfolio, visit masterworks.io slash richdad for priority access. That's masterworks.io slash richdad. And see important disclosures at masterworks.io slash disclaimer. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Chai Radio Show, the good news and bad news about Biden. No, I mean about money <laughs> and how he's making me a rich man, but unfortunately he's making Sarah poor. <laughs> and uh, But that's the game out there. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and YouTube, and leave us a comment or a review whenever you listen. All of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. And we use our kind of, because we don't sell anything. You know, we don't have any, we don't say buy this, do that and all that. We're just purely inf- educational informational. So if you like this program, you have friends, family, or business associates who need to listen to this, please listen to the show. And please, anybody who is into the stock market and real estate market right now, or even worse, somebody who believes in saving dollars or loonies, the Canadian dollar or yen or pesos, this is your program, because I don't know if you understand here that they're printing trillions of it. And when um, when Biden shut down the XL pipeline, I went, oh my God, that guy is a communist. 
Because when he shut down the pipeline, inf- we knew inflation was going through the roof. And Sarah, you know, was, was complaining about how much is how much did you pay for your last tank of gas? Seventy dollars. It was twice what it was a year ago. Yeah, That's- and, and all I say is thank you because I got richer. She got more. <laughs> And so, and, but that's the game out there. That's what the Rich Dad program is about, to show you there's always three sides to a coin, rich, poor, and the other side of it. And I, you know, so I, I hate Biden, but I thank him for making a richer man because oil went from about 30, I was selling oil at $30 a barrel in my wells, went to 130, I went, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. And I mean, no, thank you, Biden. Then he blames Putin and I'm going, oh my God, this man's nuts. And then he starts yeah. a war in the Ukraine. I'm going, this is really nuts. And so anyway, we're talking about how do you play this because they're gonna keep printing money. They have to. Plus our, you know, I mean, I, I just can't imagine. So if you're saving dollars and we're in the biggest bubble of all times, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, biggest bubble, to me, the best investment is still silver, gold, and oil and mm. Bitcoin or crypto. So our guest today is Jay Martin. He's president and CEO of Cambridge House. He puts on the VRIC, which is May 17th and 18th. I will be there. If, if they didn't have all those stupid communist restrictions, I'd be there in person because I love Canada, love the Canadian people, love your little bot's blue beer. You know, it's just a fabulous country, fa- fabulous town. But tell us about the VR. When we're talking about people are Bitcoin miners, but there's also junior miners in silver and gold and oil, actually. So That's tell right. us about what you do there, Jay, with the VRIC. Yeah, the, the VRIC, the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, is it's built to help people understand how to make money in the resource sector. And so what we do, Robert, for two days is we gather... There will be about 300 companies, junior mining, uh, producing mining companies. So that's exploration, developments, and, and production companies in the precious metals and resource sector. And then I'll have about 150 keynote speakers take the stage. And the way we select our talent is based off of their track record. And so I look for individuals who consistently have skin in the game in the resource <laughs> sector. It can talk about, and then they have to have been serially successful. Well, and, and they can and talk also- about got skin and got some skin back. That's, that's the game. That's, <laughs> that's important. <laughs> yeah. We don't, <laughs> you're right. A lot of people leave that skin there. They walk away skinless. <laughs> no, it's not the point. So, you know, that's what it's all about. I think that, you know, there's, I, I yes, I'm exposed to Bitcoin, but there's one asset class that has survived the rise and fall of hundreds of uh, empires and thousands of market cycles. And and that's gold. And I know your audience is familiar with that. Yes, I'm bullish Bitcoin, but it hasn't proven itself in all sorts of environments yet. Whereas gold has always retained its value. Well, gold is God's money. It was put here by God, same as silver. I forgot, I forgot, I forget the LMS number like 79 and 47 or something. But that was chemistry class, which I flunked out of also. <laughs> I, I do know it's on the periodical ch- chart of elements. So gold and silver are God's money. And the reason that I really enjoy talking to Jay, because I bring back fond memories of hanging out in Vancouver, British Columbia, where I heard more bullshit than I could ever stand. <laughs> and that's what you want to go to the VRIC for. You want to hear all these pitches of all these guys who have major gold mines and silver mines and sometimes oil guys are out there because Vancouver, British Columbia is resources. That's and right. in the next 50 to 100,000 years, resources will always be a play. Like Russia is one of the biggest resource producers, so is China. And Canada, British, Vancouver, British Columbia is a major resource producer. And what Jay puts together are all of these guys. I, I you know, if it wasn't for COVID, I'd be up there because I go talk to all of these bullshitters. I mean, all these uh, pitch guys, you know, and they're all telling me why they have the biggest gold mine in the world. And Jay knows I just bought into the biggest gold mine in the world, thanks to Marin Katusa. And I'm an extremely rich man today. Extremely, and I have oil. I'm getting richer every time. Putin, I mean Biden, opens his stupid mouth. But resources is how the rich get richer. This is the bad side. The poor get poorer too, big time. Am I correct, Jay? 
You're correct. Yeah. That's why, you know, like we said at the opening of this conversation, if you're just walking forward in default mode, hoping everything's going to be all right, you know, it's a mistake. You got to take control, right? Yeah. And step one is getting educated outside of the mainstream media narratives. That's what we endeavor to build. I mean, if, you know, the reason I build the VRIC is because I have questions. It's a very self-serving project, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you look at who's going to be on our stage, you've got a couple former world leaders, former prime minister of Canada, Stephen Harper, former president of Mexico, Felipe Calderon. We've got a ton of economists that I respect. Danielle DiMartino Booth, David Rosenberg, plenty more. But the oh purpose- Oh my God. Uh, I might even risk going to Canada and fighting the COVID stuff. <laughs> you got to do it. You got to do it. That. I mean, and you'll be there virtually at least, uh, you know, if we find a way to get you there in person, we're yeah. going to do it. But the point is like, I want, as I want to hear as many perspectives, strategies, opinions, and forecasts as possible, because then you can find some truth, right? Because no one's got it right. Right. But everybody right. has a bit of a thread, you know, right. then you can pull on those threads and build your own strategy. Okay. So what does VRIC stand for again? The Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. And ladies and gentlemen, that could be the biggest, most important conference for, for your future because not only we listen to some of the greatest people speaking what's going on, but also you have a lot of these junior miners. And if you really want to strike it rich, you want to be in one of those junior miners. And years and years ago, 25 years ago, I was one of those guys standing there with my little junior mine. And and I hit two, I hit one in Argentina and I hit one in China. And it, that little Chinese mine turned into the biggest mine in Chinese history. Uh, for about <clears throat> a good year, I was a I was a billionaire just from this one mine in China. And then the Chinese said, thank you very much. <laughs> so I stopped eating Chinese food after that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's the, I, I love Vancouver, British Columbia. I love that show because you get to talk to all these characters. Am I correct? And what... And what happened to you is a very common story, right? You, you know, and I think more so now than ever, you've got to look at the geopolitical risk of, okay, so you have a promising deposit, you know, the entrepreneur's track record's pretty good, but where is it, right? right. And and exactly what happened to your mind happens all of the time. Right. In, in, you know, if it's a massive opportunity. Somebody else did the work, uncovered a very profitable uh, deposit or venture within the country. It's like, We'll we'll take this. Thank you very much. Right, and give it back to the people, which rarely ever happens. It, right, as you know. But <clears throat> yeah, and uh, I'm I'm glad my little uh, Argentine mine is still kicking off silver. So that's that's working well. They didn't take that yet. Right. But that's why what Jay just said a very important point here is it's called geopolitical. I call it country risk. Mm-hmm. What's the country risk? So if somebody says, "Well, the mine is in Iran," I'd say, "Well, I'll pass." So yeah, but it's the biggest in the world. I said, "I'll still pass." Yeah, And that's yeah. how you get educated. So I would go to the VRIC and just cruise around, listen to the great speakers who speak on what's going on in the real world economy. Unless you want to believe Kamala Harris, who can't even find the border of Mexico yet. She doesn't know where that is. <laughs> but she's advising the border of Poland. I mean, oh my God, what leaders do we have here? But anyway, then you go talk to all these junior miners. It's... Uh, it's an education like, un, I've, it's unprecedented. Just two days, you'll learn so much about the resource industry. And resources are gonna be the biggest play coming. Am I correct there, Jay? I believe so, yeah. And you know everything you said earlier about the risk factors, you need to take that in, into consideration. You know, Rick Rule, one of the one of the gurus in the sector that most people know, and he's been a mentor of mine for a long time, his piece of advice to me six, seven years ago was, he said, Jay, I would have made 10 times more money than I made, right? Doing half the amount of work if I only ever bet on the same five or six entrepreneurs, right? Instead of casting as wide of a net as he did. And look, you have to do that work to find those five or six entrepreneurs, but it's a people business. You're betting on the who. You're betting on one or two individuals and the decisions they're going to make, right? And so, you know, that's, that's why we build this show. So you can meet the individuals and the executive teams. They'll be there to talk to you. You can hear from the experts who've been doing this for a couple of decades on stage and say, here's who I follow. But you know, I, I think when I say you got to have rules to stay no quickly, you know, that's what we do at the VRIC. And, but it's, it won't waste your time will not be wasted. I mean, I learned more hanging out in some of those little pitch rooms and things like this, asking yeah. questions. And in the room, and not, you know, I'm, 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 I was so junior 
which meant I mean I knew nothing. But I'm yeah. listening to more sophisticated guys, older guys asking questions of the minor. You know, what's how do you do this? What's that? What's the asset on this? What, you know, what about this? What about that? What about this? And that's how I learned so much in just a few years. And now I'm I'm an owner with Marin Catusa, one of the biggest gold mines in world history. And what so a great paid skill off. set. And my you know? time in Vancouver paid off. And right. I had a good time. A lot of, lot of free dinners. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. Dinners. Yeah. But, you know, spending time in those pitch rooms, that it's so valuable to understand how to read people like that. Yeah. Right. And now your, your bullshit detector, right. Yeah. Is finely tuned because yeah. of how much yeah. you've heard. Right. <laughs> and you can now probably during the first 30, 60 seconds of the pitch, you can know if you need to be engaged in this or not, because well, if, right even away. If you don't know there's older guys in there and they're ripping them. I mean, yeah. I learned so much, but if I'm sitting at home and some stockbroker calls me, Hey, there's a guy coming to town with a dog and pony. It's yeah. one of those junior miners coming to Scottsdale, Arizona to do a dog and pony show. And so you go out and you sit to listen to the same rubber chicken dinner and yeah. this guy, but you don't have the sophistication of the other investors in the room. No, I mean, it's absolutely. priceless. What the yeah. VRIC does May 17th and 18th is priceless because resources, given that inflation is gonna be here to stay, resources are gonna be your best and best investment, but it's also, in my opinion, the highest risk. Yep. It's the highest risk there is. So in, in two days or three days, you can sit there and learn so much, your education like a PhD in bullshit. I mean, in mining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, but uh, you know, it's, you got to come and, and do the work. Right. And right. we make it easy. It's two days. There'll be 150 keynote speakers, 300 junior mining entrepreneurs. And if you can learn how to say no, you, you get to the yes. And you get to those companies that can, that can change your life. I mean, I, I, I honestly feel like I've been waiting my entire career for this market. You know, I cut yep. my teeth yep. in the junior mining sector from 2010 forward. It was a yep. ruthless bear market where nobody was making money. And everybody who was there for the easy money had fled. But as a rookie in the business, it was such a great time to cut your teeth. But, you know, at CambridgeHouse.com, that's where all the info is. You can get tickets at CambridgeHouse.com. And the show is May 17th and 18th. It's a great time to be in Vancouver. Right, right. And I, you're so young, but I was out, I was out there in Vancouver in the 80s and 90s. And it, it was just the best education I ever had. And right you know, what what makes what makes me such a pessimist on Biden and the Treasury and the Fed is what I learned in Vancouver, and it was a really exciting time because gold, oil, and silver are real money, not the dollar, not the loony, not not you know not the Canadian dollar, not the peso, not the yuan, not the U.S. dollar. Its resources are real money. If you understand that. And it's like, you know, I wanted to go to the Bitcoin show for the same reason. I could listen to all these guys pitch me on why their little, well, their little coin's gonna hit it and all this stuff, you know. You can learn more in a few days going to these conferences. So that's why, in my opinion, resources are the next biggest investment. And if you really wanna learn a lot in a very little time, but really hang out with some more than better than average guys, guys like me who sit there who have been gone through the ringer. You know, I, I still remember being one of those junior miners pitching my mine. And I was right. I was absolutely correct. We had the biggest mine in history in China, except I didn't understand country risk. Do mm -hmm. you know, I do now. <laughs> yeah. You know, and China is gonna, China, like I said, China's selling uh, selling, buying oil from Saudi Arabia and Yuan is a big move to me. It's huge. Mm. It means China saying F U U S dollar. That's what it means to me. And mommy and daddy are still out there trying to save a few dollars, you know, work hard and get a pay raise for 15 bucks an hour. They're completely out of touch with what's going on in the world. So that's why, you know, Jay, what you're putting on with the Cambridge house, VRIC, Vancouver resource intern. Uh, one more time you guys say, cause I just see VRIC. Yeah, yeah, we, we call it the VRIC. It's the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. Good. May 17th right. and 18th. So I really highly recommend if you're, you want to really learn a lot about the future of resources, 
please go to Vancouver, British Columbia. That's right, okay. CambridgeHouse.com. Dot CambridgeHouse.com. Any words there for uh, Jay there? Sarah? Oh, Jay, thanks for coming on and appreciate it. And everybody visit CambridgeHouse.com and get your tickets to VRIC. Okay. So thank you, Jay. And we come back with a final word. Thank you. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. Special thanks to Jay Martin. He's such a young guy. I mean, uh, <laughs> I was up in British Columbia in the 80s and 90s, probably talking to his dad and his mom or something. But anyway, um, he's the president and CEO of Cambridge House International, and he's putting on the VRIC, Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, May 17th and 18th. And I sincerely, sincerely mean this. Resources are the investment of the future. You know, there's Bitcoin and there's all, there's all will be technology and all this stuff. But with, when Biden is in charge and the way the dollar is set up, the dollar always loses money. It's, it's called Triffin's Dilemma. If you're the reserve currency of the world, the dollar always loses value because debt always goes up. So the Fed has to keep printing, the treasury has to keep printing. And that's why if you read Rich Dad Poor Dad, which came out 25 years ago, it said the rich don't work for money, rich don't save money because the dollar is fake. The US dollar is fake. All currencies are fake. So people talk about, well, this, you know, the euro's getting stronger. To me, it's all bullshit. I want resources. I want gold, silver, oil. That's what, and then today, Bitcoin. And that's how I think today. So the VRIC is really about, you get to hang out with all these, I call them Frito Banditos. And when I was about Jay's age, hanging up and living in British, Vancouver, British Columbia, I had an education that is beyond reproach. And what I learned from all those bullshit artists up there made me a very rich man. And so like Jay said, this is the time we're waiting for. So Sarah was perfect. She comes in and she's whining about the price of oil and the gasoline. And I'm saying, thank you, Sarah. You just made me a rich man because <laughs> I'm in resources. What would you think? Uh, well, I mean, I always loved having Jay on. And I was checking out his lineup at VRIC. And I noticed two two of your buddies, Peter Schiff and Harry Dent, are going to be there. Yeah. So that'll be exciting. Um, but also Daniela Camboni from Sansbury will be there. So, um, And she's we, she call, we call her the queen of gold. Yeah. Um, so that'll be an awesome lineup. But, you know, one of the things that even Jay said that I think when we interviewed Rick rule a couple weeks ago, he, he said, I'm holding on to my cash for the perfect opportunity. And that's kind of what Rick said. Yeah. Rick said, I'm heavy in cash right now because the opportunities are so small, you know, the don't exist like they did before. So I, I, so I'm starting to see a trend here. Right. Well, it's resources and see a Bitcoin mining, which I, which is impossible for me because I can barely turn (laughs) on my cell phone. But I do understand mining yeah. and oil. You know, I worked for Standard Oil and I make fortunes in oil. And just recently, thanks to Marin Katusa, also out of Vancouver, British Columbia, we bought the biggest gold mine in the world. And I got it for pennies, pennies, pennies. And that's how I'm going to get rich. I mean, well, I am rich, but I'm not counting on tech stocks. You know, I'm not. So I have a quick question. This is um, probably for the newbies or the uneducated like myself. For junior miners, do you have to be accredited? You or should be. But those are smaller deals generally? They're the extremely high risk. Okay. Extremely. Okay. But the, so the caution, you have got this is resources while they're abundant. You need to be educated in this field is really the message. The risk is, no, the risk is so freaking high. I have, if I had known, I would never have gone, but sometimes being stupid is a benefit, you know? <laughs> so I'm hanging up, I'm hanging up in the Vancouver, British Columbia in the 80s and the 90s. And I'm going, I am so over my head, but it's exactly as Jay says, he has a room full of all of these liars and con men and good people. <laughs> But I learned more, but I didn't learn from the miner. I learned from the guys asking the question. Who had done it before. So the old guys like me, you know, I was a young guy then, Jay's a young guy now. But I would sit in the room and listen to these old guys, just rip these guys. And then you have the what they call the newsletter promoters. Today mm-hmm. it's called, faith, you know, YouTube guys. Mm-hmm. So I'm listening to all these guys pitch their Bitcoin or Solaro, Cardona, and 
I listen to all that crap, you know, I go, okay, yeah. but somewhere in there is a the truth. So that's why the VRIC is a perfect place because trust me, ladies and gentlemen, inflation is here to stay. It is here to stay. This guy Biden is a criminal. And thank God we have Kamala guarding the southern border here. You know what I mean? <laughs> All that fentanyl going across the border. Oh my God, this is just heaven, but that's a different kind of resource. <laughs> and if you understand how the dollar is created, you'd be at Vancouver because 1944, the US dollar became the reserve currency of the world. What that is a thing called Triffin's Dilemma. That means we're always short of dollars, so they have to keep printing. And they'll always print. It's the, the system is flawed. So exactly as Jay Martin said, this is our time. So I want to thank all of you for listening. If you can make it to the VRIC, May 17th and 18th, what's his website? CambridgeHouse.com. And thank you all for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show.